let's do an amortized analysis of binomial heaps. So in part one, we saw what is a binomial heap, the various operations, and their worst case running time. And for one of those operations, you would expect that typically it's actually faster than the worst case running time predicts. And that is the insert, as the video title already gave away. So we want to prove that insert amortized has constant running time. Therefore, we need an amortized analysis. We could do a counting method or potential method. Definitely, you need to know what amortized analysis is. Um, if you don't, make sure to watch that video first. I will now do a short recap of the accounting method and the potential method, which mostly makes sense if you already know what they are. You can also skip that recap and directly go to the binomial heaps and their analysis. Up to you. I will do the analysis with the accounting method and the potential method, so you can choose or watch both. But first, my short recap, amortized analysis. So we have a sequence of operations on a data structure. And we look at the data structure, di, after i operations. And we have the cost of the upper i's operation and the amortized cost of the i's operation. And in the accounting method, we define for each operation an amortized cost. We use for this coins. We express this as a number. And then we check whether those coins, so whether the amortized costs that we defined are sufficient, cover the actual cost, but in terms of the sum. So the sum of amortized costs up to the operation J should cover the sum of actual costs. Potential method does it the other way around. We define a potential, which essentially says how many coins have we saved uh, with di. Uh, and then if we know how many coins we want to save, then we can calculate the amortized cost from the actual cost plus the number of coins that we save or lose in that step. So the change in potential. So that is here, amortized cost is actual cost plus how much the potential changes. That by the example of the binary counter. So here once more, we have a binary counter. We store it in an array um, with A0 being the least significant bit. So here we see an encoding of zero and of one. And in a binary counter, we have one operation and that is increment. And the question is how much does an increment cost? So the first increment here, we need to do one bit flip. So it costs one. But then the next one, when we go from one to two, we have to uh, flip the first two bits. So that has a cost of two um, and so on. Going from seven to eight, for instance, we need to flip four bits. Uh, so this is not constant in terms of how many bits we need to flip in, in one step. But amortized, we can see that the amortized cost for an increment is actually constant. And for that, we look at n increments or the accounting method. So the actual cost of an increment depends on the number of bits we flip. It's one per bit flip. So then we always have an invariant. That's essentially where we store coins for, for which operations we store coins and the actual amortized cost that we define. So what we want to have is that we essentially have one coin saved for every one that we have in our current, uh, currently in the array. And to, to achieve this, we set the amortized cost of an increment to two. So two coins, namely, so why do we need two coins? Because when we do an increment, the number of ones that we need to flip, and then there's exactly one zero that, that goes to one. We use this coin to pay for flipping the zero to one, and we use the second coin to save it with that new one. And then for all the ones that need to be flipped to zero, we already saved coins so we can use those to pay. And this overall gives us that we can do n increments in O of n time. And the argument again is, so we have the invariant. So the invariant says um, we always have a positive number of coins or differently. So the amortized cost, the sum of amortized costs is larger equal to the sum of actual costs. Then we have that the amortized cost per operation is 2 exactly in this case. And then we can bound the sum of actual cost by the sum of amortized cost. By the sum, 
of twos from one to n, so that's true. That's our counting method, and if that was too fast, make sure to watch the corresponding video. Potential method, we need to define a potential. To do the potential method, the potential that we're using here is a number of one bits. Or in our notation, this is a sum over the a j values because those are either 0 or 1. And if I sum them up, I get exactly the sum of ones. Now, for the potential method, we have to check what is the potential at the beginning. It's 0. We need to check that the potential always stays larger or equal than the potential at the beginning. That is the case. And we have a non negative potential. Um, so the number of one bits is a non negative number. The actual cost corresponds to the number of bits flipped. So if in this example it would be 4, or generally speaking it's the number of bits that go from 0 to 1 and the number of bits that go from 1 to 0, we already have seen there's only one bit that goes from 0 to 1, so this is 1 plus the number of bits that go from 1 to 0. That is the actual cost. Now we look at the, at the change in potential, because from that we get the amortized cost. The change in potential is the increase in number of ones, and this increase could actually also be negative in principle. So the increase in number of ones in one step, okay, that is the number of bits that go from zero to one. Um, of course, that increases the number of ones, minus the number of bits that go from one to zero, because that decreases the ones. Again, from zero to one, there's one, so this is one minus number of bits flipped from one to zero. Finally, for the amortized cost, I sum up ci, which is one plus a number of bits from one to zero, and the change in potential, so the delta i, which is one minus this. So one plus one is two, plus this number minus this number is zero. So overall, we get two. So having the potential defined, we have derived the amortized cost and we come to the same conclusion as for the accounting method. So far, so good. Now we should be equipped for the amortized analysis of binomial heaps. And we first do an analysis using the accounting method. Idea is we want to save one coin for every tree, for every binomial tree. So let's see how we need to set amortized costs to make this work. So make zero, so building an empty heap, um, we will have to do work, or constant work, um, but we do not need to save coins. So we can simply set the amortized cost to one, one for simply creating this empty heap. For linking, so here you also see an example of linking. I mean, for linking both, trees come with a coin and I can use one of the coins for the linking and the remaining coin stays with the remaining tree. So linking I can do with an amortized cost of zero. Insert. So for insert, I have set here the amortized cost to three. I need two for the make one. So one for the make one because it's a constant time operation. One because I want to save a coin with that new tree. Then I use one for the initial call of union. So this one is not for overall union, but for simply calling union. Now in the union, I'm going to do some linking. And this could be several steps, but we already know linking, every linking, every time I link, it costs me zero coins. So this, gives adds zero to this cost. So insert I can do with an amortized cost of three. Let's check union for merging two binomial heaps. So first of all, I'm going to merge the two lists. This takes time, length of the lists, the number of roots that I have. My lists have lengths order log n, so this step simply will take order log n time. Then I'm going to link trees of the same degree. For that, okay, for that I go through the list again, but that is over all of log n. The linking itself I get not for free, but with an amortized cost of zero. So 
kind of for free. So that could look like this. Here I have my list now, my merged list, and then I do the linking. And there I can obviously again pay with a coin um, that the tree, the tree that is removed or is linked already had. Conclusion, union. I could set amortized cost to O of log N because I need that here, or log N in terms of make it a num fixed number. And then there's some constant overhead. So log n coins suffice for union. Delete min. So delete min. What happens again? I'm deleting a node, and then I have my original list. I have the list of trees that were the children of that one. I merge those, and I do union. So the problem here is, I mean, it's not really a problem, but the problem is that the trees, the children of that minimum, didn't have coins yet. So I will have to first give each of those a coin, but they are log n children. So I'm spending at most log n to give every child a coin. And then essentially it's the same as union. So overall, so union was O of log n. Um, so overall I will need O of log n coins. So again, I managed with amortized cost of O of log n. That concludes the amortized analysis using the accounting method because now all operations take the time that I would like them to take. Let's do the same with the potential method. For the potential method, we first need to define a potential. The potential that we're going to use here is C times the number of trees in the data structure, where C is a constant that is at least one. So actually, we could have set C to one, so we could have simply have written this without C. But because we're going to use similar potentials uh, later on, so in other videos, this is uh, useful to have as it is. Now, we have to check whether the potential method applies. So we look at the initial potential, which is zero. Initially, we don't have trees. And the number of trees is always non-negative. So the potential always stays above the initial potential. So we can use potential method. Now we want to calculate amortized costs, which are always actual cost plus change in potential. So let's just go through the operations. Make zero. Actual cost, I'm making an empty heap, cost me one. But change in potential, I'm not creating a tree, so that is zero. Amortized cost is actual cost plus zero, so actual cost, and that is one. Link. If I'm linking to trees, my actual cost is one because I simply need to build this link. The change in potential is I'm losing one tree, so it's minus C. And therefore, amortized cost is one minus C. C is at least one, so amortized cost is smaller equal to zero. Make one. Make one, I have actual cost of one. I have change in potential of C because I'm creating one extra tree. So that gives me an amortized cost of one plus C. As long as C is a constant, this is theta of one. Now we are equipped to do an insert. So what do we need to do for insert? So for insert, we first make this heap of size one. We can put it at the very beginning of our list. So we do not need to run a merge because this is a heap of size one, which I can put at the beginning. And then we start the linking. And essentially the cost that we get is constant for kind of initialization. And then the number of steps, the linking steps that we do. So if K is a number of trees that we touch, or that we iterate through, um, meaning the, also the last one that I create, then I'm doing k minus one links. So the actual cost is one plus k. For the change in potential, we have to look at how does the number of trees change. So we get one new tree for the new element, and we remove k minus one trees by k minus one links. So this is a change in number of trees. For the potential, we multiply this with c. So that's the change in potential which we can also then simply write as C minus C times K minus one. For the amortized cost, now I have to add up one plus K and this number. For this, it's useful to rewrite that number here or the, the part. So if you look at C times A minus one, I can write this as 
c minus 1 times k minus 1 plus k minus 1. And then this occurs negatively here with a minus sign. So minus here gives me minus this thing here. And then this plus is a minus and that minus is a plus. So why do I do this? Because now I can use this minus k that will cancel out in the sum with that k. If this one will give with this one together will give me a two, then I have two plus c minus this term. Yeah, let's do that. I've written this here. So we have here one plus k for the ci plus what I have here. Then the calculation that I just showed you, I can cancel one of the k's and I get 2 plus c and minus this term here. That is non negative, so minus that makes it only smaller. So I can bound this by 2 plus c. c is a constant, so this is constant. Now let's do union. So for the union, that's a bit more complicated to express, but otherwise also not more complicated to do. The actual cost depends on the number of roots in the merge list, plus how often I do linking. The actual cost is k plus l, um, where k and l are both in O, o of log n, because I have O of log n roots, and at most as many, or even at most that many, minus one links. So both of those are O of log n. Now, for the change in potential, with every link, I lose the tree. So the change in potential is minus c times the number of how often I link. So the amortized cost is a sum of those, which I can write as k plus l minus c times l. Actually, this is smaller equal k, and k is an O of log n. That is a union. Delete min. So for delete min, we get the following. And let me simply write this out. So the actual cost is okay. First of all, we need to find and remove the min. If you have a pointer to the min, that takes constant time. Then there is uh, the union itself, and the union itself depends on the number of roots. The number of roots is now the number of roots that I previously had, minus one plus the number of children of the min, and that is the degree of the minimum. So this is the number of roots in the new list, including the children of the old minimum. And then I have plus L for the link, that's the same as up here. And I will I want to update the min pointer, and for that I have to go through the list at the end once more, or I do it, maintain it while I'm doing the other operations. Let's, for safety, add a plus log n there. Change in potential is as follows. So we get new trees, um, namely the children of the minimum, give us each a new tree. Of course, we also have the old tree that goes away. So this uh, overall removing the minimum gives me r minus one new trees times c for the potential. And the linking again removes c times a trees. So I can write this as c times r minus l minus 1. Adding this up, c i and delta i gives me O of log n, because I can bound all of these terms by order log n. And since we're not trying to prove more, that um, gives us a valid bound and a good bound for the setting. So all amortized costs are as claimed. So we can conclude, yeah, indeed, get an amortized running time for the insert of O of 1. Other, thing, other operations stay as they are. Next video, we are going to look at how to also get an O of 1 for the union.